today part two of my in-depth music room tour in this episode i'm going to show you how i sort those albums behind me i'm going to show you some really cool records plus i'm going to give you a glimpse at some parts of the music room i've never shown before be right back Hi, my name is Frank. Welcome back to channel 33 RPM, your channel for vinyl gear and more. If you missed the first part of the record room tour, I will leave a link below this video. In that first part, I kind of showed a lot of the stuff that you see behind you here. And I kind of talked about why it's there and what it does. As I said in this episode, I got some other pretty cool stuff. So you're gonna to wanna to watch this all the way to the end. We're gonna start by talking about how I sort these records. Channel 33. RPM. I love this. This was made by Leanne Beck, who is the wife of Gilly Beck, my good friend Gil. And uh, yeah, I dig that. It's a mini me. I'm not sure about you guys, but I keep all my records alphabetical, starting at A, and it goes on. Some bands get their own section. For example, Black Sabbath has its own section. And I'll just show you here. I don't shy away necessarily. From collecting doubles and triples of some albums and i gotta get the canadian pressing and there's a uk pressing and there's a still a still sealed canadian version and uh, i love black sabbath there's a russian pressing and um yeah it goes on and on what else do we have here we got the bees and we keep going turns the corner here i'll move the etch sketch that was my kids, but they didn't want it, so I'm taking it. This cubby here, this is all Alice Cooper. Alice gets his own section as well. It starts from easy action. It goes all the way to the latest stuff. What do we have here? Alice's last live album. And go back a little bit. I wasn't sure where to put... Uh, there's Paranormal. I wasn't sure where to put this one. This is... Uh, it came out in the last record store day, but... I put it, you know, back in 73 when it was recorded. I put it with the Billion Dollar Babies album, or I put it with the newer stuff. Anyway, just, you know, Dirty Diamonds. Got some duplicates, various pressings, and uh, there we go. Let me go back to some of the older Alice stuff. The older stuff is always... The older stuff is always the coolest stuff, isn't it? I got, uh, again, multiple copies of Schools out, but check out... Which one is it? You got the three various pressings, but check out this one. It's got the uh, panties still intact. So I was happy to find that one. Believe it or not, I found that one at a thrift store a while back. Judas Priest, another one of my favorite bands. Those guys they occupy you know, probably a little over a cubby. Got the debut, got various pressings of Sad Wings of Destiny, Canadian, couple Canadian. The U.S. pressing as well. That's the collector and me speaking. Just all these multiples, like stained glass. We got Canadian. We got the U.S. We got the Japanese, and oh, not in order there. Got to fix that up. But I got the MoFi one as well. Point of entry. I'm not a big fan of that British cover, but I'm equally not a fan of the North American cover that particular album that's a still sealed one and that's the original one i got as a kid and i'll maybe quickly show you a couple more here priest screaming for vengeance again multiples mofi japan japanese canadian us i'm in deep guys <laughs> i am in deep this is another band that occupies a lot of real estate here in my record shelves it's kiss debut i got a, a newer version of it and i have a couple older canadian ones with and without kiss and time kiss alive back to black that is the album that got me back into record collecting kiss originals man that one i'm so happy to find it's a minty minty copy got for 25 bucks kiss destroyer kiss destroyer resurrected got a german version of it and are doing a bit of a world tour with some of these albums. Do you guys collect multiples? Is it just me? Or do you go for various pressings from around the world? I think it's fun. If you pay close attention, various pressings do tend to sound different. And it depends on a variety of factors. Greatest Kiss, that one, 
It's really, really hard to come by. It's probably the most valuable record in my collection. These are the more recent ones up here on this end, but uh, some interesting ones. That's an original Kiss Unplugged. Those go for a couple bucks nowadays, as does You Wanted the Best, You Got the Best. And of course, that's also an original Kiss Alive 3. Led Zeppelin's another band that I got quite a bit of. That's a Russian pressing of the debut, Canadian, uh, US. Again, I used to find these particularly Led Zeppelin. I used to find a lot of these in the thrift stores in really nice condition. Like That obviously doesn't happen anymore. That's a still sealed copy of Led Zeppelin 3, and I got a play copy as well. And I mean, I, I, got, I got a lot of Led Zeppelin. In Through the Outdoor, there's multiple covers for this one. They came in a brown paper bag, and you didn't know which version you would get. And I think there were six, and I have five out of the six. So it goes in alphabetical order. At the end of all the records, I have soundtracks and compilations. I love soundtracks. Sometimes it's just for the subject matter, just for the movie. Other times it's because I, I dig the, um, the soundtrack as well. Everything from 80s comedy to uh, modern horror. Ho modern horror, pardon me. Bob and Doug bunch of stuff in here and again most of my soundtracks at least the older ones I found in thrift stores these are all thrift store finds over the years so a couple of bucks the exorcist it's actually a laser disc so I should probably take that one out of there here we go crazy heart that's a good movie and a really good soundtrack if you haven't heard it country ish country for sure Got John Wick. That came from La La Land Records. Those guys reissue or issue movie soundtracks, and they do an absolute A plus job of that. If you ever see a La La Land soundtrack, don't hesitate. It's always, they always put an A plus effort into it. Classic Jaws, Christine, Gremlins. I mean, these are all stone cold classics, aren't they? Another press from La La Land Records. That's the recent reissue of the E.T. soundtrack. Enough with the records. Let's swing around and look at some more of the room. I still love CDs. CDs are right now the best value out there in terms of pre-recorded music. That sounds good. I don't know how many CDs I have. I don't actually log all my CDs. I have spreadsheets with all my records, but the CDs I don't. And they're not very well organized. They're kind of organized by genre, sort of, kind of. Same with these tapes. I got some tapes on these shelves. I got tapes in my closet. Spit in the eye. That's my old one of my old bands from the 90s. So these are some of the tapes I probably listen to more often than my others. But Kiss, Fight, um, various, various tapes. Van Halen, ACDC, Ozzy Osbourne, and on and on. It goes, and again, CDs on top are my, mo my more recent purchases, the ones I'm still need to fully digest, and then I kind of, I've sorted them by band anyway, and loosely by genre, but I do need to figure out a better way to sort those CDs. On the wall here, I have records I have been listening to. People ask me sometimes, where do I get, where did I get these shelves? Those are actually from Ikea, and they're intended to display picture frames on. This particular line has been discontinued, but they make a similar one still nowadays. And this is my computer. This is what I use to record and edit my videos. It is an iMac, and beside that, I have a microphone. I use that for live streams and voiceovers, and I have that ring light. And the chair. You guys cannot underestimate the importance of a good desk chair. I've been working from home for a while because of COVID, and I recently upgraded to this better chair because I was getting a really sore back with my old one, and miraculously, my sore back went away. My speakers, these are Fluence S XL. Eight F's. I recently got these. The grills are magnetic. I love the look of these. There's no hardware. They look slick and they sound great. If you missed it, I did a video a while back. My review of the XL 8 F's. Link below in the video. We'll turn around here. There's one of my guitars. That's a Godin. Godin is a Canadian guitar manufacturer, which uh, 
surprisingly is not uh they should have been bigger they should have been more popular they're still around today but that guitar plays so well the neck is thin and really really fast anyway let's check inside the closet this is what you guys never see i keep a bunch of things in the closet here various various things including uh, books uh, this is a portion of my book collection i got more in the other room i got some cd box sets the police and ozzy osbourne the Clash, and in those boxes I have uh, record sleeves, both inner sleeves and outer sleeves. This box here, this is full of letters that Channel 33 RPM viewers have sent me. When I get a package, there's often a letter in there, and I keep all of those. Behind that, I have my 8-tracks. I've been collecting 8-tracks lately. I have the player in the other room, so I did not show it to you on this particular tour. What else do we have here? We have uh, some more record cleaning products. This is the groove washer, uh, another groove washer system. And again, all of these racks of cassettes. And I need to sit down and kind of go through these and sort them out better. Again, these ones are loosely organized by genre and band. There's some metal with accept. And what do we have here? Black Rose, Police. This is more rock, I suppose. And here we have soundtracks. And I got, I don't even know how many cassettes I have. Again, I haven't actually logged my tapes in any sort of spreadsheet or database. I also keep some turntables in this closet. I love this one. This is a vintage Hitachi or Hitachi for my American friends. That's a PS48. Here I have my Fluence RT85. This one is equipped with an Ortofon 2M Blue Stylus, the Hitachi I just showed you. That one had a Nagaoka. Here is a little Squire amp. Grab that at a garage sale, and these are all my guitars. I used to have them hanging on the wall, but you know, space is limited in my music room. It's 10 by 10, so I don't have them out. I got a Gibson Les Paul in there. I got a Fender Mexican Stratocaster. I got an HM Strat, and um, on top I got a acoustic guitar as well. Here's just more storage, old magazines. I got a couple boxes of eight tracks. I got the original box from my Coleco. And I got a really cool fully manual Yamaha turntable there as well. Down there I got a Sansui AU217 integrated amp, which I tend to pull out once in a while. I have another music listening system up in the family room with another turntable and speakers and whatnot, so I swap out amplifiers and turntables from time to time. Before I complete this video, I want to quickly show you my secondary listening space. This is the family room upstairs, and and as I said, I swap out some gear from the basement once in a while, so I might take one of the turntables from the closet, or I may take the receiver from the closet, and I will use it up here. In the front there, you will see a couple of Maroc or Marac speakers. They were a Canadian speaker manufacturer. Did some really good stuff in the 80s, and these speakers are quite unique. I actually found these at a garage sale several years back, and I had to grab them. I mean, I just looked at them and thought, hey, that's, that's pretty cool. Ended up getting the speakers refoamed, but man, these things have a huge soundstage. Merak, or Merak, M-E-R-A-K. You don't see them too often, but they did produce some good stuff. And then here is, you know, the secondary listening area on top. Right now you see my U-turn orbit turntable. And I might swap it out for the Fluence or the Hitachi down the road. You know, got to keep life interesting. And below that, I have another one of my integrated amp. That thing is a beast. That is a Kenwood from the late 70s, Silverface. Sounds fantastic. So I want to show you this quick secondary listening space before I wrapped up the video. All right, let me know what you thought of today's episode in the comments below. And let me know if you have any questions about the music room. If you dug this video, I'd appreciate a quick thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what the heck are you waiting for? Dear 33ers, I hope each and every one of you has a fantastic week. Until next time, keep on spinning.